Hey guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and today we're back out at the bog to look at one of my sundews. Now this is Drosera filiformis and it's also called the thread-leaved sundew and the reason we're looking at this one today is because I think it's probably the easiest sundew there is to grow. Um, it is almost a weed, honestly. Now you can see that they grow by sending out um, slender filamentous leaves that sort of unfurl from a central rosette. And these got, this plant is native along the entire Eastern seaboard, all the way up into Canada and Nova Scotia, down through the US, all the way to Florida. So it means it has really versatile growing conditions. Um, many people grow it indoors as well as outdoors. My preference is always to grow them outdoors. They produce droplets of dew at the, th at the end of glands protruding from the leaf surface. And this attracts small flying insects where they get stuck in the sticky surface and then digestive enzymes um, digest the soft tissues. Now, some species of sundew have leaf movement, but this one doesn't. During the winter dormancy, the leaves all die back, leaving a central rosette or hibernacula, often which turns black. Um, I cover mine in the winter with burlap and six to eight inches of pine litter to protect the plants, uh, though these guys are pretty darn bomb-proof. There is some confusion about the taxonomy, um, and as an amateur, I really don't feel qualified to comment. There's a few different thoughts about how many species there are. I'm not even entirely sure which one I have. Um, I find the thread leaf sundews though to be super easy to grow, extremely rewarding, easy to flower, and as you can see, they spread readily. They're often a common companion plant to Saracenia or North American pitcher plants and often are found as hitchhikers when purchasing those plants. The seeds do require some stratification, meaning they need to be put in a cool, damp place or left in place outdoors in order for them to, to grow. And you can see in this garden that it has just spread all over the foreground of the bog. Um, I do have a bunch of other sundews as well. So if you're interested in content like this, let me know down in the comments and I can do more species spotlights for you. As always, thank you for your continued support and I hope you've learned a like learning a bit more about the sundews. Um, similar to my pitcher plants, these guys are kept in a soil mix that is half sand, half peat. Um, they do well in this bog environment. They don't like it as wet as some other plants, though again, they are almost bottom proof, really, really cold tolerant. And with the red color and the tall structure, they can get up to 18 inches tall. Just a really, really great plant. 